Hi, I'm Lolita Fadjo, and this is the Shuttle Pod Show. Because you, you came to town as an actress. I didn't was you? an actress. Yeah. Yes. You were an actress. I, yeah. yeah, I still act every yeah. day. In Where my did head. you come from? <laughs> 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 Me too, <laughs> sweetheart. Exactly. Me too. Yeah. I'm acting right now. <laughs> I'm acting right now. Can't you tell? <laughs> Gonna go and do my convention thing. Got my costume, I'm going now. Yeah, we're having a ball. It's Star Trek, y'all. Hey, there's the board. Everyone, welcome to another episode of Shuttle Pod Show. Today we have very special guest Lolita Fajo. We'll be answering your fan questions, doing some Star Trek trivia, finding ourselves on Connor's remote island, and much more. As always, our Patreon members get a full extended version of this episode. But before we move on, we have a special message from Andrew Robinson. Like, subscribe, and join us on Patreon. <laughs> Thanks, Andy. Thanks, Thanks, Andy. <laughs> I'm Erica LaRose, and for our hosts, Connor Trenier and Dominic Keating. Hi, hey, guys. Hey, How's hey, it going? Good, uh, yeah. good. I uh, feel like we have some news. Yes, we do. We'd like to give a big thank you to our Patreon members who helped us get this new space. We have a new home. Woo! Yay! We're permanent, um, and I'm expecting twins. <laughs> it's gonna. It's that's, gonna that's so, do you all? Oh cheers to you all. <laughs> thank cheers. You, thank cheers. you. Thank you very, thank very, you very much. much. To our first uh, guest, cheers. Lolita. Thank you for being here. Yes, yes I'm glad you guys. Space. Right. It's very nice. Yeah. It's very nice. Yeah. Come to darken our towels. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And we'd also uh, uh, like to toast to all of you Patreon members, uh, all of the people who have supported our show since the beginning. Um, without you, we wouldn't be here. Uh, literally, we would not be in the space without your uh, incredible support. So thank all of you. God thank bless you. you. Thank you. We're moving on, feeling strong. Yes, <laughs> and this place will keep evolving. It's mm -hmm. going to be great. Yep. Right now, it's just a... a a, a dentist office. <laughs> I, on the other hand, shall not be evolving. <laughs> I, I have evolved. And this, this, this is, is it. This is Drink your last it in. Hurrah. That's what you get. That's what you get. Uh, ladies I find evolving rather tiring, actually. <laughs> requires a nap in the afternoon. It really does. <laughs> so last year. All this evolving makes me tired. <laughs> 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 Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, treks and trekkers, thrilled to have today in the Golden Throne a woman who has spent decades, more than thirty years, in the uh, in the franchise of the um, oh, that we can't mention. This thing uh, of ours, yeah, this thing that of thing. ours. This goes uh, nostra. Uh, script supervisor, she, um, and she look, she knows where all the bodies are. Oh, listen, yeah. when when she writes the book, buy it because the skeletons will be tumbling out. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm, getting the, I'm getting the chapter. I know that. Oh, yeah. oh, at least you guys have more than one chapter. <laughs> well, on that note, we uh, know her uh, and love her. She has been our convention agent. For twenty some years, and very good friend, and yes. very good friend, yes. and I, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't add a filmmaker to your resume. Yes, and, uh, yes. ladies and gentlemen, Lolita Fajo. Yeah, thank the you. Spanish, the Spanish. Say Fajo. <laughs> Fajo. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank and you she has said it many times. <laughs> <laughs> a Fajo, Dominic. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you. I'm so glad to be here Thanks in your on. new space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God bless. yeah. We're, we got you piggybacking broken in. off mm -hmm. of um, your work on the documentary yeah. for Michael Westmore. Yeah, absolutely. how's that going? The Westmore documentary is going really well. Um, fortunately, documentaries aren't under the the uh, SAG strike rules, right. so we can shoot and keep going. It's right. hard to know what as long is and as what we're, isn't. I know, as long as we're not shooting at a studio or something, and we shoot everything at Michael Westmore's house, which is brilliant. Right. He's opened up his home to us, and oh, it's just you. wonderful. He's a sweet, sweet man. It's just oh, he's awesome. Amazing. Yeah. Is it kind of amazing. a museum? Oh, absolutely a museum. He has one room that has so much stuff from Rocky to Star Trek to everything he's done, Mask, and all yeah. of his Oscars, all of his Emmys. Unbelievable. Wow. And yeah, so we're really thrilled with that. And it's not just about Star Trek, which is fabulous in my mind. It's about the Westmore legacy, yeah. which yeah. really is a big deal. It's, yeah. uh, as far yeah. as makeup goes in this in the town of Hollywood. Yeah. I mean, and even it, before they, they came from England. Yeah. Originally. Yeah. His, so. his father was a wig maker. His grandfather. It was his grandfather. Grandfather. Uh, was 
uh, Winston Churchill's yes. personal uh, wig maker. maker? Whatever, yes. well, whatever, <laughs> whatever hair Winston <laughs> had left. And they were named. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's curl Larry now. Uh, yeah, his great grandfather, his grandfather looked after Winston after yeah. the Boer War. Yeah. Oh. And then after that war, he, I remember he that's when he decided to come out west to Hollywood. Well, they went actually went to New York first. First to yeah. New York. Yeah. And then ended up coming on, opened up the first, you know, hair and makeup sort of shop, as it were, in Hollywood. And yeah. Yeah. That, 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 that uh, interview with Michael was one of the f- favorites I, we did, I think. Yeah. It came away just feeling really a part of this town. And yeah, you must stories. feel that way too. Oh, that you every get to time hear I him. talked to him, just even yesterday having dinner with he and his wife was just amazing. I mean, his stories are incredible. Yeah. And he's so nice. He's so non Hollywood. It's unbelievable. Really? He loves talking about it. He loves talking about it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, he was a really a pleasure to have on the really show. Really refreshing. Really nice we could have guy. been there all day. Oh yeah. Well, so this we is, spend days there at his house. Right. Literally. This is with David Zabone that you're making, and you've worked with David a lot. Uh, Dave, From 455 films. 455 Dave films. Zabone, yeah. yeah. I worked with them a bit on the DS9 documentary, which was a huge hit. And then we decided to do Loved the, it. Yeah, it was fabulous. What a great piece that was. Um, and then we decided to do the Voyager documentary, and I was kind of the perfect person to be the talent coordinator and the interviewer for that since I worked on right. that show from the beginning. And yeah, we're all finally in, in editing. COVID slowed us down for about a year and a half, right. as it would with anything. But we've the, all the interviews are done. They're in full editing mode. And hopefully it'll be out in spring of 2024. That's the Voyager one. Voyager That's documentary. The Voyager doc. Yeah, right, you're right. finally bringing them home. Right. We're finally bringing them home <laughs> as it is. <laughs> well, that takes us. So, how did you first get involved uh, at, at Paramount? And because you you came to town as an actress, I didn't was you? an actress. Yeah. Yes, you were an actress. I, yeah. yeah, I still act every yeah. day. In Where my did head. you come from? <laughs> 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 Me too, <laughs> sweetheart. Yeah, Me too. I'm yeah. acting right now. I'm acting right now. <laughs> Can't you tell? Um, Where did you actually seven? Seventh Could you give me a little more? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm seventh generation Californian. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. wow. wow. I am. Wow. Yeah. So. so I'm born and raised in Santa Clara, California, and I've been acting since I was three years old, and I got my acting degree, theater degree at Santa Clara University, took classes there from Patrick Stewart. No. Yes. That's did. right. You did. did. Really? I did. Yes. That's right. He so came over, didn't 19, he? Part of, yes. Yeah. I graduated in 1981, and that year right before that the um the head of my department was a jesuit priest went to a catholic university and he was an actor about patrick's age at the time took a year off to go study at rada yeah. and uh came back and said that he was bringing patrick stewart who no one knew who that was uh-huh. no one knew who that was and his wife at the time and two other people from rada were going to come over and teach <laughs> us master classes for a week all right and so that happened, and that was amazing. It was a, a, a dream come true, and eight of us were picked from Patrick and the troupe to do a performance that was open to the public at right. the end of that seven days. And yeah, so that's how I first met Patrick. So his draw was that he was a national theater actor, wasn't yes, it? Yes, that and, was and, it. You know. And from there, they went on to do many universities. We were just the first one. Right. Had yeah. he done the John Barton tapes by then? I don't think he'd done anything uh, but Rod at that point. I mean, I don't even think he'd done... Isn't Dune one of his big first Was that it, was it the, the, the Lynch movie? Was he yeah. in Dune? Yeah, Dune, yeah. Yeah, right, but I don't right. think he... This is 80, 81. Mm. So, right. yeah. Was he the worm? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I don't he was the, the guy worm. who trained uh, the kid, this, the the main character in the movie, the hero of the movie, how okay. to fight well, and defend now. himself. Oh, right. so, he was how was your uh, experience being taught by him? It was amazing. I mean, you know, these were world Shakespeare actors. We were just dying. It was wonderful. Did, yeah. I, did, did Jonathan Frakes tell us a story about, about being... No, somebody told us the story where um, they had seen Patrick at UCLA. Was it was Armin it? Shimmerman? Armin. Yep. And but somebody else said that they. I thought it was Jonathan. Patrick. Well, somebody had said that they'd seen Patrick do the thing, and they were like, "I think I have your captain." Right. What was that? Oh, can't think. Anyway, so that had to be a long so time ago. You did classes with Patrick. Yes. Uh, and then how much later is it in 80, life? Uh, 87, I got the job at Star Trek by a total fluke. 87 was a huge writer's strike. Yes. 87 yes. It was shut down for months. 
And um, that was in between the first and second seasons of Next Generation. They'd only shot that one kind of horrible season. Sorry. The The one not to be mentioned. The one not to be mentioned. (laughs) Um, And um, I was acting before that, and then everything shut down. So I got a job with a temp agent, went to work at some plant out in Culver City, and I was typing these. Remember when we had white out and pink out and purple oh, yeah. out? I was doing that all day. It was miserable, but it was a job. The mother of one of the monkeys made a Ex- fortune out of white out. Michael Nesbitt's really? mother yes. invented white out. Yes, yeah. yes. No yeah. kidding. Wow. Yeah. He was <laughs> made a living fortune. <laughs> fortune. A generational fortune. Still is, I'm yeah, sure. Out of white out. <laughs> So the strike ended and the temp agent said, you know, what do you want to do? And I said, well, get me out of here. But I knew it was going to take a while, just like it will now with the strike, for production companies to get up and running again and blah, blah. So I said, if you have any jobs at Paramount for a day or two, I'll take it. Because I lived right on Franklin. Yeah. Which you know You were right there, weren't you? Right there. I remember the building. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so he called back and he said, I have three jobs in writing departments. One of them was on Cheers, I remember. Oh, one of them awesome. was yeah, <laughs> yeah. One of them was Star Trek Next Generation. I don't remember the third one. Probably something that well, failed. That's terrible. <laughs> yeah. And I said, you know, the Star Trek Next Generation, I'm never i I'm not supposed to say Star Trek. Next generation. Um I said, you know, I took lessons from Patrick Stewart and I know Jonathan Frakes from Softball League. So <laughs> really? it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's from the Hollywood Softball oh. Leagues. Yeah. My husband he played in the same ones. So I said, what do I need to know? And he said, you need to know Microsoft Word. And I'm like, "Mm, not sure what that is, but (laughs) I'll get back to you. Because again, this is, you know, 87. And I called my best friend who worked at Ralph Edwards Productions. And I said, John, do you know what Microsoft Word is? And he said, yes, we just got it on our computers. Not sure what it is, but if you want to come and do the tutorial, (laughs) you're more than welcome to. Oh, my God. Okay. And they wanted me to type scripts. And I thought, well, I've never typed one, but I know what they look like, obviously. So I did the tutorial and I thought, okay, I don't know what I'm doing. I've never used a computer really, but they were still using typewriters at the time. And that was the reason they wanted somebody to get them working on computers, the writers, Ira Bear and all of them that were there. So I went in the next day very eager to work in my little mini skirt. And I walked into the Hart Building, and you guys know the Hart Building. There's one door in, there's one door out. It's a four level building at Paramount, old building. And Gene Roddenberry, that's where he was housed. So I walked in, and there's no women in that building at that time. So there's four doors down the hallway and four men on each side standing outside those doors. And I walked in and I looked down this hallway And the guy on the left said, oh, thank God, you must be the Microsoft Word expert. (laughs) And I said, yes, I am. (laughs) That was the best acting job I did, you know, 15 years later. So I still don't know Word. (laughs) I still didn't know Word. Oh, my God. But yeah, so that's how it started. I was going to be there for one day and it turned into 15 years. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And I at some point I thought. This is interesting, and I don't really know if I want to stay here, but everybody was so nice. And, you know, I I had to make a choice, though, because you're working 15, 16 hours a day. Mm. Even in the office. Even in the office, in the writing department. Yeah. Yeah. Not so much back then, but later on. But you can't be pursuing an acting career and doing that. So I thought, you know what, let me try this for a while. And I'm, I'm glad I did. I have... Do I have regrets? Maybe. But, you know, life is full of regrets. So What was the environment like? There was no one there back in those days. It was very weird because (laughs) there was no show yet in production because it still hadn't started up again Mm. for the second season. And there, Michael Pillar, Michael Wagner was there. Michael Wagner lasted about six weeks and then they brought in Michael Pillar. And Michael Pillar came in and realized that's when things really changed. He realized that he needed to get people on this staff that knew Star Trek. Mm. And that's when he started asking for fans and to write their scripts and send oh, them is in. Is that how that started? That how, start with Michael Pillar. Oh, really? Yes. And that's how they wound up with Ron. With Ron Moore. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Gene yeah. was still alive at this point. Gene was very much alive. Very much alive. Very much alive. He became alive. less as much alive later. Later. Right. Yeah. The first few years I was there, Gene was very much alive. Yeah. He was great. Mm. I mean, again, I wasn't a Star Trek fan. So for me, I knew who Gene Roddenberry was and I knew what the original series was. I'd never seen it. 
But it was still, I was like, this man is so nice. Gene was so nice. Was Every he morning lovely? he'd come in and say hello to everybody and never made a birth, you know, let a birthday pass and, oh. you know, invite us to his house all the time. Wow. So, yeah, he was. That great. one up in uh, Bel Air. In there, Bel Air. The, yeah. uh, the jungle room. Yeah. And I went there one time. Yeah. Before Rod sold it, bless him. The yeah. jungle room. Yeah. Oh, they had. Oh, yeah. It, 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 it was a full. Tell. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I went as Mowgli. <laughs> <laughs> it was fancy dress. Wow. Uh, no, they had, they, they, it was a full on sort of, you know, full 1970s Elvis house, if you will. Yeah, you know. I mean, Major had it decorated and totally in the it 70s was, you know, and 80s. Full yeah. shag pile yeah, yeah. carpet and the it one had of never the rooms been was the jungle room. Gold yeah. gilt all yeah. over. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, you know, festooned with, you know, uh, that sort of artwork. And, and then, God bless... Uh, this was after Gene's passed and, you know, his ashes. There was a little file, a little phylum hung on the sitting room wall that had been up in one of the space rockets up into space. You still have it? And yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I did think about it, trust me. <laughs> like, <laughs> if Rod hadn't been standing next to me. <laughs> Alarms would have gone off. <laughs> Armed guards. What ashes? I never saw no ashes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dumb. I thought everybody got one. My liver puddly is... <laughs> yeah, it was a party scally. favor. Exactly. <laughs> a little bit of Jean. They used um, to throw the most amazing parties there, you guys. They oh, did, God. Oh, my imagine. God. Yeah. yeah, I'm so glad I was part of all that. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so, you, so you start working in earnest there as a script... No, then, just as an assistant to the producers. Assistant to, to the producers. Typing scripts, right, typing trying to scripts. get them to wean off their long yellow ledger right. pads that right. they were writing. And... I think it was just like two years later, Eric Stilwell, my friend, was the script coordinator at that point. Right. And um, he was going to move on with Michael Pillar to do something else. I, I can't. It's all fuzzy now. It's a long time mm. ago. But he went to work with Michael. Michael was still there. And I became the script coordinator. So what does so, a script coordinator do? Uh, in the pre in you know, the pre production? You know, I'm script. sure it's different on every show. So I mm. always want to make sure I say that because I think. For Star Trek, it was probably a different job than on most shows. I, you know, I don't know that for right. sure. Um, we kind of made it up as we went along then, because no one had been that position. Eric had had it for two years, but we really didn't know what it meant. Hmm. But basically, um, you know, there's always scripts going. There's two scripts in production. There's two scripts that are being written. There's two scripts in post production. Mm -hmm. Script coordinator is kind of all over all of those scripts all the time to make sure, like when you guys would get pink, blue, blue, mm -hmm. yellow pages. Salmon. All, salmon, all those <laughs> colors. We killed more trees in Hollywood than any show, I'm yeah, sure. I bet. Yeah. So um, to clarify, uh, the different colors uh, for script pages revisions. are new drafts of the script. Yes. The mm -hmm. color represents yes. a, a newer draft. And on Star Trek, it was, and I'm not sure about Enterprise because I wasn't there but on our shows, on TNG, DS9, and Voyager, you could not make a change on a script <laughs> on the set without it coming through Rick Berman's office yep. and then back through the writing department. And that yellow page had to go out, even with one or two words changed. Even like oh, in wow. descriptions of a scene. Exactly. Yeah. It was crazy. Right. I, I just can't imagine that things work like that. Is there a reason for that? It was Gene. Yeah. Yeah, that was how apparently how he ran the first you know the first so, show, the original series. And Rick just carried that on. Rick carried it on. And again, when I first started working there, Gene was very involved. He was involved in everything day to day. Mm -hmm. So there was not going to be anything that was put you know gone around Gene. Yeah. Um, it's funny when we would shoot an episode and we would get I think Salmon for us was like the last. That's a long way down the list. Yeah. And then there's of, of Tan. Colors. I remember Tan being way down there, too. Really? Yeah. I don't know if we ever got to Tan, but I mean, <laughs> Salmon must have been like a, a good 11 or 12 revisions down the list. Certainly half a dozen. Yeah. yeah. They didn't yeah. give you guys a chart? No, they should have. The color, the color yeah. chart? The color chart. Yeah. Is Do you find that, 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 that Star Trek has, um, you know, they keep their own, they... The, the relationships that they have with people like, you know, you, they promote you, you from within. grew up like uh, um, promotion and relationships. And I do think I do think that Star Trek absolutely is a family. That's why we're all here right now, obviously. Um, so, yes, I do think so. I mean, obviously, you have to let people go for certain reasons. You can't keep everybody around all the time. That right. That wouldn't be realistic. 
But I think if you do, if you fit into the family and you're doing a good job and you got along with everybody during the day and you could play the game, it's obviously a game. The entertainment business is a game mm-hmm. like anything. Right. Um, yeah, I do think, you know, they're, that, you know, Michael Piller and Jerry Taylor for me were my mentors, Ira Bear too. And I could see where they would find people that they would keep forever there if they could. And if you look at the credits and you look at all of our history, we were all there for a very long time. Yeah. Mm. And that you don't find in Hollywood. I mean, you don't get a show for 15 years. Uh. And, you know, if I had stayed and done Enterprise, that's another four years. I mean, and many people did stay. That's an amazing run in Hollywood. That's mm-hmm. crazy. So you've got people like, you know, Terry. You, Who was a PA. Who was a PA. He was, yeah. Brand's, was a PA. Yeah. Brand's PA, uh, yeah. you know. So, yeah, I do think, obviously, that they take care of their own. Yeah. And um, when did Brannon come in to Brannon came office? in very early. So I, I'm sure that I don't have the exact years correct, but I want to say Ron Moore came in 88 because he had sent in a spec script called The Bonding. The Bonding, yeah. The Bonding, that yeah. Was, that was part of that and spec script. And Michael scripts. bought it and produced it right on and right. brought Ron on as a week-to-week uh, story editor. Was it just per, by chance that that script got pulled out of a pile to be read? Well, and... no, Eric, um, Richard Arnold kind of helped get that through. He did, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so but, but did, and, uh, did Ron take a tour? Is that That's how story? I thought he dropped it off. Yeah, there's a lot of speculation. Listen, it bit... was in that slush pile. I know right. it was in that slush right. pile. Somehow it got in that pile, and right. somehow it got to Michael. I don't think right. we'll ever really know. And was that the... actual script produced, the bonding? 100%. 100%, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, normal changes. Right. But yeah, yeah, no, that was... In all the years that we had the script submission policy, we had 30,000 scripts come in those doors. I, there was only four that we bought and used pretty much as they were written. Who read them? We well, we did the right the writers did, and then we had professional readers that re- read them hmm. and would do synopsis on them. Oh, it, did, yeah. it must have become more work than it was worth. Well, that's in the why end. we finally stopped. It, it, uh, we right. finally stopped doing it. It was too much. My office was just wall to wall scripts, and right? I had two assistants who had offices, and they were just wall to wall scripts, and we were getting. Th- uh, lawsuits against us saying you used our script and oh, it just became too much. And some crazy ones came in, I know. Oh, what, what was Brandon, the one, what was the one the about tangerines? The, the, Vel- well, I, the, oh, one, okay. the Velcro, the Velcro plan. Yes, made me we laugh. had one person. <laughs> and I know I'm always going to meet this person at a convention one of these days when I tell this story. But yeah, we had a script come in and Troy was on, ended up on a planet of Amish people and everything was That's Velcroed right. together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was just bizarre. That's amazing. I and then see that uh, someone got wind of the fact that Ron's big was a big fan of Elvis, and he had a yes. velveteen Elvis in his office. Yes, and the the end of next generation met Elvis or something. Yes, oh. Elvis. And I'd then watch we, that. <laughs> and then we had a big crate of tangerines come in one day, and the script uh, was called Tangerine. And Brandon is neurotic as he is, of course. Get rid of those tangerines; they're poisoned. You know, so we had to throw the tangerines out but yeah no it was okay. we had some crazy stuff happen oh yeah. my god but what did you do? at the other <laughs> end of it we got some really good scripts and stories and people that got to come in and pitch right. like lisa clink it goes the list goes on from people who actually sent in scripts that we didn't buy hmm. but the writers felt like they had potential and they would bring them in to pitch and then they right. you know it i mean i that list is probably 30 or 40 people long. Really? Of people that at least got one thing out of it that right. might have started their career. Well, but we have Rene Echevarria. He sent in a script called The Offspring, which is still one of the best next generation scripts ever. Um, and he came on staff and he's gone on to be a big producer, writer. And Jenny, what was her name that went on to Buffy? Esperson or something I read about. Oh, Jane Esperson. Esperson, yeah. 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 There were so many, but uh, but some of the ones really stick out, like Ron Brand and Renee. Right. Yeah. And at some point, you decide that you're going to get into the conventional world. Early uh, on. Quite early on. Very early on. Like the first year I was there, Eric Stilwell said, do you want to come to Anaheim and go to a Star Trek convention with me? I'm like... I don't know. It's my job. <laughs> it's, yeah, it sounds really Was this a weird. creation event or? I, I don't remember, to uh, be honest with you. It, that was so long ago. Creation was still in New York. Then. All right. Hmm. Um, but I went and I was like, oh, well, this is kind of interesting. It's a little weird. 
But I, I, you know, it was fun to a degree. And then somehow, and I can't remember, I got involved with Creation and they were still in New York. Mm. And they hired me and a couple of the other people from the office to work with them on the conventions on the weekend, selling T-shirts at their T-shirt tables. That's how I first started with them. And at that time, there were a ton of them happening, weren't there? Every weekend. We would go to Fresno, Bakersfield. I mean, we were gone every single weekend. It was amazing. They had three conventions in three places every single weekend in the United States. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Those were the days. Those were the days. I did 10 my first year. That, uh, yeah. Did you? Yeah, yeah. I was, I'd seen that documentary, Trekkies. Oh, yeah. I yeah. was like, oh, there's an appendage here. Yeah, I was on yeah. a flight every weekend at first, wow. yeah. Yeah. So you were doing your uh, full-time you job yeah, I was and doing do that. It. Wow. So did, I you couldn't didn't have do a day that off. now at my age. No. <laughs> yeah, it was easy back then. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. We would go Friday night after work and come back Sunday night. Yeah. No rest over the weekend. No rest over the weekend. <laughs> but uh, but then it didn't it quickly. I started becoming a guest for Creation and and as a guest for them. And then eventually, Ron and Brandon and I did that writers workshop, and we did that for years. Um, why we were having the submissions coming in because mm. that really helped people understand how to send in a script. Mm. And we did that all over the world for, for at least two or three years. Yeah. So you you you. Brannon, Eric set up Generations, which was and Ron, yeah, and Ron, set and up. Generations was the big, huge convention at the Royal Albert Hall. Wow, yeah, for the premiere of Generations in London. How many people were in that convention? It was sold out. That I, the Royal Tens Albert Hall was packed to the gilts. Amazing, yeah, yeah, and the and we had the premiere that night on Friday or Saturday night with the whole cast at Leicester Square and Shatner. Wow. Yeah, it was something. And Eric and I emceed that event wow. at the Royal Albert Hall. Yeah. Wow. It was amazing to see Marina Sirtis on that stage just in tears, thinking she would never have made it out of wherever she grew up in England. Yeah. You know, and here she is at the Royal Albert Hall. She's a Hall. bubble from North London. Mate. Yeah. 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 Bubble yeah. squeak, Greek. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that yeah. whole thing I'll never get. <laughs> and, and, and even to see Patrick very moved at the fact that he was on that stage for that was it was pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'll yeah. Was that eighty eight? Did you say what was it? What, year, what sort of year was that? We'd have to look up what year that came yeah. out. Uh, generations, I can't remember. Were you working in cahoots with Paramount for this, or was this? In, no, in that was strictly with Horizon Conventions. Oh. Yeah, and CBS helped get Shatner there. But we got all this next generation actors there. That was there. 1994. There you go. 94. Yeah. That was the year I arrived. Yeah. Wow. Well, well, well. Um, I don't so, know if it was CBS back then, but whoever was whoever in charge. Was right. yeah. Then at some point you decide, you know, you've met a lot of the actors and you decide you're going to start representing. I didn't uh, decide that. That happened the opposite way, actually, <laughs> um, because I'd been involved in the conventions, not just with creation, but all over the world by then. I was so close with all the DS9 actors that it was Rene Abergenois came to me one day and he said, Lolita, you know what? Our agents can't stand doing this stuff. There's no money really in it for them. They don't know what they're doing. We're losing conventions because our agents aren't even telling us about this mm -hmm. stuff. And you seem the perfect person to help us. So that's how that started. So, so, so yeah. you started repping Rene and then and I guess the Chase. Dis yeah, and yeah. All the Deep Space Nine cast and a right. lot of... Then Voyager came along and <coughs> then you guys came along. Yeah. Were you still working at Paramount at that stage or did you give yes. them that? You were? Yeah. So yeah, you yeah. were doubled... I worked there till 99. Right. And there yeah. wasn't a conflict of interest? Nobody no, had any not at issue all. with that? No, because even Jerry, Michael Piller, Ira, they were doing the conventions too. Oh. Yeah. Did you ever pinch yourself and be like, how did I get here? <coughs> I guess so, yeah. I mean, you know, you just don't know what life's going to throw you, right? I no, mean, I never... True thought when I walked into that heart building that my life would change so drastically. No. And I thought it was going to be a temp job and I would go back to acting. Right. Right. I mean, yeah. Right. So, yeah. You know, I think it's the conventions that help me have really no major regrets about that decision because when you're on stage at a Star Trek convention, that's all about acting and having fun and yeah. making people laugh. That's true. Right. Mm. That's true. It's entertaining people. Yeah. That's, it is. So, how did you get into the um, the, the documentary? Uh, that was field? Th 
through Dave Zappone at 455. Dave and I met about 10 years ago. I was still working for Creation and running some of their events. And there was a Xena convention, the last of the Xena conventions mm-hmm. 10 years ago at the Burbank Marriott, where I was just staying this weekend. Right. And Dave was filming that to do a documentary with, with Bill Shatner on Xena. Oh. So Dave and I, I was helping Dave because I was running that show and helping him get interviews with everybody. And we kind of just stayed in touch. And then when he brought me into the DS9 doc, then we kind of just really became friends and thought, eh, this might be a good fit. So uh, with 455, you began doing... Yeah, I worked with Dave on the DS9 documentary. And then, like I said earlier, when it was time to do Voyager, I just became a full producer on that and did all the interviews and, you know, got all the talent. Because everybody knows me. All the talent knows me from that show. Mm -hmm. And all the the crew knew me. So I was the perfect person to try to gather up everybody. And um, we've I've interviewed over 80 people for that documentary. For Voyager. For Voyager. Have you really? Yeah. Well, yeah. Did you interview us? You did. Or was that DS9? No. For, uh, didn't we? Didn't we, did we do an interview for either? Did not? you come to that Burbank? I yeah. can't remember. To Burbank? Yeah. Two years ago now. Yeah. We've been, I feel like this Voyager documentary is like never going to end because COVID, <laughs> it's just taking right. forever. But I did think you did. No, I think you're, you're, you're thinking of uh, that agent of mine, SMS, did his own documentary. We did something for him. Do you remember? I don't Ian? know. I know you guys did a lot of virtual stuff for us we during did. the pandemic, which was, we yeah. really appreciated, by the way. Was there a driving force? I know that Ira was really a driving force, the DS9 documentary. Yes, he was. Uh, was anyone uh, like that with Voyager? No, it's completely different with Voyager. We're mm. pretty much on our own. We don't have that driving force. Um, like Adam, um, my God, I, I'm blanking on Nimoy. Sorry. Right. You know, Adam Nimoy with The Love of Spock was worked with Dave. Right. Obviously, he was the driving force behind right. that documentary. And then Ira was, but Ira wasn't there at the beginning of that. He came on much later on oh. for that documentary. Oh, did he? Yes. And I didn't really realize that until we were on that last cruise and Ira was there and saying that he went in many months later when they were finally editing it and he went into Paramount and he saw all these notes these guys had on this big bulletin board and he said, Oh my God, they don't know what they're doing. They need help. <laughs> oh, so that's when he literally said to Dave, I'm coming on board now because this is my show mm-hmm. and I want this to come oh, out okay. Right. Yeah. And so, no, that's when I really. Is that how the writer room ploy came about? Yes. And, uh, yes, it was a very exactly. Good, it was that a was great, amazing. That was a great the it was fantastic. Was fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And we're trying to, fu- we don't want to duplicate that with Voyager, no. so, but we're trying to. Still find something find that hook. could be, yeah, a hook. Yeah. 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 Did you learn a lot of lessons having done the DS9 one that sent you down to the Voyager? I think one? so. Yeah. yeah. I think the guys really did too, you know, that are the, like all of these guys, the cameramen, the editors, everybody learned a lot of stuff from right. that one. How did Dave get him, Dave's opponent, how did he get involved with Shatner and, and making that first? documentary with you him. know i i should know this but i i honestly don't you'll have to ask him right. when you have him on but they've been together over 10 years he and Shatner. Time, yeah they? was dave just was he before getting into film production with with bill was he uh, some sort of assistant to him or was it always no, that relationship I, no they always i i can't remember and you know right. it's really embarrassing because he just okay. told michael westmore this story yesterday and i can't remember it <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the short-term memory. Right. It's really it bad. It's really fades. bad. But I can tell you what I did in 1974. Uh, exactly. Exactly. But, Would that uh, be interesting to you? Too? <laughs> <laughs> no? Okay. Well, <laughs> I don't know this story. Oh, it's too funny. <laughs> yeah. It's really bad, but it's true. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so how long does it take? How long did the DS9 one? These take a long time. Well, this Voyager one, like I said, because of COVID's taking forever. I think the DS9 one was done within three years. Mm. This is going to be more like five. Mm. Wow. Jesus Louise. Yeah, yeah. Oh, because wow. we, we shot during COVID and we were doing it on, you know, online and it, it, on Zooms. And it just, it just sucked really so can we, we scrapped all that can, i was gonna say no, can you use any of that zoom stuff of not it. really no. yeah yeah so once we could start shooting two years ago even though we were still in the pandemic we had a 
uh, studio for a week and we got a lot of interviews and we've been doing it ever since then. But the Zoom stuff just doesn't look right. Not it would have been okay had you had all of that on Zoom. Right. But once you they, start once doing you, it right. live again, nah. then it just looks terrible. It looks right. Yeah. yeah. How do you know yeah. when you're done? Oh. I don't know. That's an editing question. That's <laughs> really, yeah. You I just mean, get I as have, much as you can. I guess and... so. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. the interesting, interesting thing about documentaries is you have to find the story while you're, while you're doing it. Yeah. Sometimes. And you know, so you shoot so much, so much, so much, and you know, you're only going to use about that much of yeah. every interview, right? which mm. is crazy. We have like 14 hours of Garrett. Shocking. <laughs> <laughs> so do we. Yeah, so do we. <laughs> well, at least six or seven of those hours are of Garrett being Janeway or, or yes, George. Of George. Course. <laughs> of course. Or Shatner. Sorry, G, man. <laughs> <laughs> An easy punch. Yeah. But do you, when oh you're making, I know, I know documentaries, I mean, you, you call it a documentary is not just putting a camera in front of someone and then letting them talk about a story. There's always a slant to it. You have to find the story arcs right. in it. Yeah. And yeah. What, well, what, what I know what our editors, Joe is doing is, is he's taking each story with each actor. Like we're doing segments on Jane way and seven of nine. Cause that was an obvious thing to do. And we're doing a segment on controversial, controversial. Yes. <laughs> um, on Jennifer lean because she left the show early. Right. So Don't bless that poor yeah. girl. She's, yeah, we didn't get to interview I mean, I, her. I but, looked her up. She's in a lot of trouble, isn't yes, she? Yes, yeah. We did not get an interview with her, but we're doing a nice segment on her in a very good light. Mm. You know, all every one Terrible. of the actors and all the producers that we talked to had nothing but good to say about her. She was just a child on that she show, She was a too, child, but she? a very good actress. Very good. Yeah, very good I've enjoyed actress, watching her because uh, yeah. I wasn't particularly aware until we started, you know, looking at the shows like we've been yeah. doing to, you know, get up to speed. But yeah, it's it's, it's a she, mental health issue. Yeah, right. Really sad stuff. Yeah. And, yeah also, uh, I guess going along the the Jennifer Lean line, you know, we're, our show is the only one that I'm aware of that didn't lose a regular cast member. I oh, guess so. Wow. Yeah. 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 Uh, DS Nine did not. <laughs> Terry Farrell. Terry Farrell. Shit, Terry. you're right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I blocked yeah. that one out of my. Was memory. there? Uh, did you ever hear? You know, wind of those sorts of things in the office, like with Terry and. Well, like you know, you were involved. Well, with in Jennifer Lean, year. yes, yeah, yeah, because it was happening so real time, and Jerry Taylor was right across the hall from me that whole time. What so. was the fire? I mean, they they wanted. I know they wanted to get rid of somebody. Was that just a numbers thing? Or? Yeah. It was, but she was having problems. And she, uh, she was having then. problems. Yeah, and, uh, she just wasn't right. productive. I mean, when she was on camera, she was okay, but there was just a lot of angst and just a lot of stuff lot of to get her there. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, yeah, I see Hollywood's fraught with that, isn't it? And they often send the wrong message to the actor at the time. They think that they're going to respond to pat glove and and they right. and the, the pat glove just sort of you know makes that behavior more pronounced and yeah they true. think oh well i'm gonna get away with this crap and uh yeah it doesn't often work out and it was a numbers way. game you know they wanted to bring jerry ryan in right oh and yeah and they saved Someone some money had to here go. pay yeah. some money there and that didn't go down so well, did it? No, it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> did you get uh, uh, Jerry uh, and um, Kate in the room together? No, not together. <laughs> no. Well, that no. never happened. That well, happen. they've made up. They've been doing some stuff yeah, together. Yeah, you know, they've, you know. they've made up quite a bit on the cruise, actually, to, oh, God, now I should say two years ago now. It was in 2020. We had the Voyager 25th anniversary on the cruise. Um, they did make up, they were doing okay, but no, I couldn't interview them together. It was much better to interview them separately. Mm. So, mm. yeah. Funny enough, I mean, uh, and I was standing next to you at, uh, in Las Vegas just now, the two Daxes in a photo op together. Yes, that took a long time. Yeah. That took yeah. a very long time. I didn't realize that. Oh, yeah, they... Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a thing. <laughs> yeah, it took, that took the cruise as well for yeah. them to just kind of go... Okay, we're gonna do this together, and we'll we'll make it work because right. it's it's for the fans. Yeah, exactly. It's for the fans. And, uh, right. Right. Yeah, and it doesn't hurt your pocketbook, I'm sure. No, it yeah. doesn't. It doesn't. No. Well, neither all. one you know? of them had anything to do with the other one. 
but in the convention world they did. Oh, sure. Not right. on the show, no, but you know, this bleeds out into a whole other world. Yeah. You know. Yeah, the circus. Egos. The circus yeah. are funny. Yeah. Yeah. Are you um <laughs> I'm curious? Mean funny. Are you inspired to make a documentary about anything outside of Star Trek now that you've had all this experience or Well, kind of the Michael Westmore thing is out of Star Trek. A little bit out, sure, yeah, a because bit, he's because mm. we're really going to focus on his life and his family mm. we got S sylvester salone already no did you really yes oh, oh, fun. Fun. Oh, oh, yes fun. yep yep so we're gonna have a lot of non-star trick people oh that's great yeah are you gonna get like well Scorsese we'd like to narrow we'd like to narrow but even michael westmore said to me last night he said even if we get to Nero, he's gonna be so boring <laughs> <laughs> Bobby. I was going to make a note of that. Oh. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Raging Bull. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, put on some weight. A little bit. Yeah. A little, little bit. bit. <laughs> but, you know, Michael's career goes back so long. I mean, one of the people that he we we're going to interview is Butch Patrick, who played Eddie Munster. Uh, I mean, Michael yes. did his makeup for all those years. And yeah. Michael, we're taking Michael's lead on this. Mm. We want to do what he wants us right. to do. Love letter. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, and there was another show, I think from the sixties called Land of the Lost. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those yeah, yeah. actors were in Vegas. Mm -hmm. And so he wants to, he, they're going to be part of this. He did too. Land of the Lost as mm -hmm. well. Man. Yeah. God bless you, Michael Westmore. You were my child. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. Wow. I mean, no kidding. I mean, that family go back to the dawn of time with it. They really yeah. do. Yeah. Which one of his uncles was, was it Purse was, was Valentino's oh, I know. personal they, guy for 30 years. I know. Valentino. Killed him. Killed him. <laughs> Damn, hardly knew him. Drowned him in makeup. <laughs> I know, it's true. Blood based, you know. God. It's funny. Like yesterday, Michael said, we could... <laughs> he forgot to put the straw in. <laughs> How'd he die? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, God. Sure was handsome. <laughs> we were going over the final, final, um, people that Michael wanted yesterday. And he said, if only Elizabeth Taylor was alive, she, uh, he said uh, she would give us hours of stuff. And, I'm, and Dave and I are like, really? <laughs> that, uh, that would have been amazing. Yeah. Because he would go to her house. He was her personal assistant. Right. Makeup artist. Yeah. Wow. And a really good, really good uh, relationship they did. I love how he told that, you know, back in the day, uh, if you were a makeup artist, you had a uniform. I mean, mm -hmm. you, had a, yes. you had a tie oh, yeah. on. It was tucked into your shirt. Mm -hmm. And you were really... You were put out there. Absolutely. You know? and, uh, yeah. And now, you know. They will look like you now. Seriously. Yeah. yeah. Jeff Lewis would show up. I don't think Jeff Lewis ever wore pants. <laughs> no. Never. Well, uh, <laughs> just a long <laughs> flowing gown every day. He tried to once and I told him, take them off. <laughs> There'll be no pants here. <laughs> uh, do you enjoy making uh, uh, the documentary? I do. You know, it's interesting. I found myself like I can't sleep at night in the hotel without my own television. There, showtime. I oh, you get the good rooms. I do get yeah. the good rooms. Um, I watch different documentaries now a lot more than I mm. ever would have thought I would have. Just, I, just because right. I'm curious yeah, now, right. it's kind of opened up my eyes to that whole world that mm. I really didn't pay attention to before. Right. Yeah. How can people see? There's not DS? a lot of money. There's no money in it. Oh, by none. The way. Zero. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, no money. No, no. No. No money whatsoever. It's for, it's by for the way. love. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. For How the can love. people see the DS9 documentary? Where is it? It is still for sale um, on the 455 website, I believe. Okay. And it does run on. I should be more in tune with this. Is I it not on Paramount Plus? No, no. No, that's the stupid thing. It's just so ridiculous that it's not on Paramount Plus. Did he and not cut a deal with with Paramount? No, they had CBS? a deal with another company. Oh. So um, I, I do. I'll have to send this to you because I don't know how to find it. Sadly, but it's out there. People but the website is called Four Fifty Five Films. Four Fifty Five yeah. Films. Four Fifty Five Films. And it's a terrific the information documentary. Is it's out fantastic. There. Yeah. yeah, it really is a good documentary. Yeah, it's so, very moving. I mean, uh, and to see that cast and uh, just how close they were, and uh, what a and great, still are. what a great group mm -hmm. of actors. Yeah, you know, they really some class acts in that cast. You know, I know, and they've parts. lost two major. Yeah. You know, Renee and Aaron both being gone no, for God so bless. long. Now. I mean, yeah, it's a terrible loss. Yeah. yeah. And I tell you who was a, a revelation to me, who I'd known in the convention circuit for a long, long time, is Mark Alimo. 
And I had no idea what an incredible, stellar performance he gave. Uh, on DS9? Show. On Garrett. DS9. Oh, my god. Yeah, heavens. he was a leading man, and uh, and then some. Gold Ducat. Yeah. Gold Ducat. Gold Ducat. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. was fantastic. And, uh, scary oh, performances. Yeah, terrific. Very real. Played him yeah. in real life, the, actually. It does. Still, <laughs> he still does. <laughs> but that scene that he had with Cisco, when, you know, they yeah. really punched each other. That was... Yeah. Production had to stop. Really? Oh, well, oh yeah, there was blood drawn. What? Good lord! Yeah, I know that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, well. I know that. I mean, that set had had. I mean, I. God bless. I mean, our set was relatively strife free, really, wasn't it? Oh, absolutely. You know, I mean, Scott was really the the mensch at the top of the food chain, but I mean, those other sets were they were a little tricky, weren't they? Yes. But, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's not easy putting shows together. Being mm -hmm. on a, a flight egos. back from uh, Florida, I think, with uh, Jeff Combs, Mark Alimo, and and maybe Casey, and we're on the plane, and you know, some twenty-something kid. He's he's had maybe one too many, and he's being loud, and it's like whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Mark turns to him, and he's like kitty corner from him. He turns to me, he's like, you know, how did Mark, how does Mark talk? It's like, are you going to be quiet? <laughs> and the kid's like, yeah, whatever, sure. Doesn't get quiet. Mark stares at him for the next three and a half hours, uh, looking back at him the whole time, just uh, stewing, uh, just wanting to like eat him alive. Uh, yeah, he's a character. He's a character. Bless him. Yeah. I haven't seen him in a million years. Yeah, he's out there. Still. Is he not, we want him seen on the show. Right? He's we not coming on the conventions yeah. for a while. No, What's that? you know what? He can't hear much anymore, and he's lost his voice. Oh. So, oh, and what yeah. a good voice he had, too. My yeah. gosh, yeah. Mm. I think Jeff still talks to him once in a while, but right. yeah, he's Mark's getting up there too. It's, right. Aren't we all? Yeah, God bless me. Yeah, are. Jesus. Do you stay, do you stay in touch with from the production uh, days then? Um. From production, um, well, Jerry Taylor, of course, right, and Ira, Ron, and Ron. Brandon. Still with Ron, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw Ron not too long ago, um, uh, and Brandon. That's the other Ron Moore, by the way, Ron D Moore. Yeah, the writer, yeah. not the yeah, uh, yeah Ron visual D. effects guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I guess not so much. I, you know, I saw so many of them when we did the Voyager documentary. And I felt like I had just seen them, even though it had been 25 or 30 years. Right. But I don't keep in touch with a lot of those people, mostly the actors, right. because of the conventions. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and why do you think the conventions have all kind of just started to slow down? You would have thought with the new shows that they would ramp it back up. But, you know, what creation has one. 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 And they used to have 40? <laughs> At least. At least. You know, it died a long time ago. I mean, you guys have felt it. Oh, You've yeah. seen it. Mm. And I don't know why the new shows aren't bringing the conventions back. I will tell you one thing. Conventions cost a lot of money. Yes. And people don't realize that. And if you don't have the money in the bank to pay everybody that you're bringing to that convention, to pay the hotel, to pay the airlines, you might as well forget it because yeah. you're not going to make the money and you're going to go in the hole. Right. And it's a very risky process. Mm. Prospect. And it takes a few years to, it does. to make any money. It does. And I think that people that, you know, the younger generation that are watching these new shows, they probably don't even know about the conventions so much. It's probably not on their radar. Yeah. You know, everything's online. Media. It's yeah. social media. Mm. They're probably doing their own version of a convention online. Well, we, right. we, we talk you know? with fans of this show about how uh, they used to go to conventions every year, but um, every year they would get more and more expensive and sure. they felt they were getting nickeled and dimed and yeah. every little thing they wanted to do cost another 50 bucks Absolutely. or another 100 bucks or whatever. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it, it's a, it was a little demoralizing from yeah. what it no, sounds I like can get that. Fans. Yeah. I can understand that. It's expensive. You know, you got to travel, you got to pay for hotel. I mean, every photo op is $80. Ridiculous. I mean, it's all adds yeah. up. Some yeah. of them are ridiculously priced, I have to say. Yeah. I'm amazed at what some people charge. But even that. the ones in, in Europe have... There used to know. be so many in Europe. Right. Remember, we used to go everywhere right. in Europe. And before you guys' time, I've told you, you know, we used to take tours. We would be there for two or three weeks yeah. and just go town to town to town to town. No, you could never do that now. Yeah. No, it's a shame. But... Oh. but 
the fact is, is that we are still around 57 years yeah. later yeah. and there still are conventions going on, yeah. which is amazing. And the ones that are there, at least the ones in the States, it seems as though, unless, unless you have it in New York. Yeah. <laughs> the, the ones in New York are ghost towns for some reason. I don't yeah. know why. Hmm. They just don't do well on the East Coast in New York. No. I don't know why. Too Jersey. Expensive. Yeah. And there's a new one in Trek and, and Long Island that's hopefully oh, yeah. will do well. Yeah. That is interesting. I wouldn't have thought that. Yeah, the last time we were in New York at the Javits Center. Oh, that was a disaster. That was 2016. That oh, was crickets. A, crickets. Oh, so for all three days straight. Yeah, you're yeah. just, you just sitting there waiting for a wackadoodle to walk up. We to had your a great table. time at night, but the daytime sure. was long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lots, lots to do at night. <laughs> it was like being in an aircraft hangar with no aircraft. And, uh, and yeah. I'd also and say Connor. that, you know, that. <laughs> and Connor. Yeah, and Connor. <laughs> that. that that company that the ran those schools. conventions, they didn't really understand what. Well, they're the ones part. that ran the Chicago show. Exactly, which yeah. is which is I can hear. They you don't guys. fly. I can hear you guys talking. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Go, continue. Yeah. No, 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 please <laughs> go on. Cut your toenails, <laughs> Howard. <laughs> uh, heavens, they're very trim. <laughs> Uh, what is your favorite thing about doing conventions, or what do you take away from it that you love the most? Money. Okay. <laughs> there it's my job, so I yeah. have to say money, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Second no, thing. It, no, it's just a really a lot of fun. I mean, yeah. we have a good time at these things. It's exhausting, though. Oh, it is. It's very yeah. tiring, and it's draining, but it's also a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, it really it is. It is a lot of fun. I mean, yeah. uh, and, you know... Uh, I mean, I, I can't imagine not doing the, yeah. the Vegas convention now after all these years. It's been 20 years. Yeah. And uh, it's a beautiful way for us all to come together and uh, and rejoice and celebrate, you know, this incredible phenomenon that we all sort of stumbled into. Absolutely. Last, it's the gift that keeps on giving. It right? is. And uh, thank you yeah. very much for that. You know who you are. <laughs> Conventioneers. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what's happening now? You're you're finishing up with Michael Westmore. I, I somebody told me that you might be doing an enterprise documentary. That's yeah. what they're saying. We would love to. We yeah. want to. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as we can get Voyager out to the public, that's the big step. As soon as we get Voyager out we to the public. We're waiting on Voyager again, aren't we? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, Am I still you know, waiting on Voyager? <laughs> that's how it goes. Um, no, we definitely want to do enterprise. 100%, no doubt. Um, yeah. So we just need another few months and we get Voyager out in the spring and then we can start on this. I'm going to yep. need a couple of months before I can get in the cat suit. <laughs> <laughs> You've always just wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've oh. got to get my ears molded. <laughs> God. Dom, you should play Jolene. That I would should, be amazing. Should, if you can't get Jolene, <laughs> yeah. we got get Dom. Him. Dom is great. Yeah. He'll do it. That's awesome. Oh my God. How am I looking now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm That's gonna hysterical. I'm going to jail for that one. Right? <laughs> yeah. In this day and age. Uh, well, that would be great if we can do an Enterprise documentary. I think that would be terrific. And um, Well, we can't yeah. stop now. We have to do it. No. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, it'll come full circle then. No TNG? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. They've had their day. They, they, uh, they continue to have their They've day. They've had yes. an amazing day. Yes, they and, have. Uh, What's the story for that? No. Do you know? Do you, have you heard any rumors on the mill about whether that's going to go another season or the? I have. What? Picard? Yeah, is but that, it's can't, oh, it's, it's over. It's gone. It is. Yeah. It's done. Isn't it? It's that over. Was, yeah, was, yeah, it's that, done. Okay. I just wonder well, with the success of the third season, whether you know, they, you know, whether they try and reboot it again. But no. Well, like on our show, they killed off the best guy. <laughs> Who was that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, they killed Stashwick. Stashwick. They killed Stashwick. Stashwick. <laughs> they killed the SLC. <laughs> now, who died in Enterprise? <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're dead. Mm -hmm. Sorry for television. those of you who don't know. Yeah, spoiler alert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. I think we should go to some fan questions. I fully expect some skeletons to fall out of the closet. <laughs> At least I hope that happens. Um, <laughs> What's your favorite skeleton? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't want to know. <laughs> Maybe <try> it, did you? <laughs> All right. Fan questions. Are you ready? I guess so. Okay. <laughs> 
Uh, Stephanie Baker from Patreon asks, what is a hobby or art that you participate in for fun? A hobby is, I'm a big baseball fan. San Francisco Giants. Ooh. Uh Uh-huh. Boo. (laughs) And um, I'm not a a science fiction fan, so my television love is like Law & Order and all the Chicago shows and cop shows in general. You're a procedural girl. Yes, I am. Very much so. (laughs) Yes. And you you dressed in San Francisco colors. Of course I did, but look at your hat. Vince Scully. Yeah. Do uh, do you cosplay as a cop or a firefighter <laughs> no. at procedural conventions? You can't talk about not. that. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be interesting, but no. Uh, Cash only. Cash only. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Diane Harris from Patreon asks, what was the favorite part of your job, the worst or most difficult? Oh, boy. <sighs> so what was the favorite part of your job and what yeah. was the worst or most difficult? I'm going to start with the worst and most difficult were many, many days being a script coordinator when we literally didn't have a script to shoot the next day. Oh, yeah. That was tough. And it was tough on everybody. It was tough on the writers, the actors, and everybody involved. So that was definitely the low points of of my job. And that was a few years of, of, you know, in the next generation, the beginning, Voyager for a while like that, Deep Space Nine. That was the worst part mm. by far. Just the stress of the stress of that, you delivering. know. Delivering and yeah. and um, on Voyager, it was really it would be twelve midnight sometimes, and we still wouldn't have any script for the next for the day. Following was it day. like broadcast news where it's like we got a page? Exactly. Hand it up to someone they yeah. run it down to the set. <laughs> we got a page. Yeah, and in those days, things were being delivered by courier. They yeah. weren't being e- e- you know right. emailed to actors. Right. So that right. was very stressful. Wow. Yeah. The best part was just being there on the good days for everything. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Huck A, TNG fanatic from Patreon asks, I saw you keeping very busy at ST Las Vegas. What was the most difficult aspect of coordinating things there for you? And how did things go there? This year, the most difficult thing was dealing with the regulations we had from the strike. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. By far. Because we couldn't say, you know, the word. And also we couldn't have the actors selling their character pictures at their tables. So that (laughs) was a whole like learning curve of trying to figure out how to deal with that. It actually worked out. Okay. It did work out. It did work out. Okay. But I was so stressed out for the two weeks before that, just literally worrying about these guys, not making money, me not making money, the fans, not happy. But the whole thing worked out very well. It kind of did, didn't it? Oh, Creation best. was thrilled, too. They right. had a good show. They had a good did show. They? they did have a good show. Just to yeah. be clear, what would happen was uh, at this convention, we could only have our, say, headshots yeah. on our table, but our name and likeness photos, we had coupons, little tickets that people would come up, do the financial transaction. We'd initial the back of it. They'd go to another table, not far away, select their photo, come back for us to sign because we, we could not have our own photos at our tables mm-hmm. in character in character. Mm-hmm. Why am I looking? So, you so, <laughs> <laughs> I no idea. You have beautiful eyes. <laughs> What's he talking about? Well, you, you, you I already to told Lily to plan B for me was I was going to go barefoot <laughs> and have my two best sellers <laughs> under the table and literally push them out left and right. I go, look down, look down, look down. Which one do you want? Oh, that's find the lady. lady, find the lady, find the lady. <laughs> he would have done it too. He would have done it too. <laughs> But, you know, again, God bless the Star Trek fans. They were so patient with it, right? Yeah. It, they made it work. They are incredibly patient. They, God bless you guys. Yeah, no you, kidding. They will line up for hours. Yes. Uh, for Garrett Wong. <laughs> <laughs> That's number two, Dom. <laughs> I mean, even in, the, even in the year just following COVID, you know, we had to have plexiglass in front of us in between the fans and us signing. We had plexiglass at our photo ops dividing us and the fans. And, they you know, still even then there. they still came. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the COVID years. <laughs> the COVID years. I spat at them. <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's like when Harry met Sally C. When he's got, got the grape in his mouth. He's like, <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, it was just a, a waterfall of. <laughs> How do you really feel? Anyway. <laughs> uh, last question is from Becca Hill from Patreon. What is the most challenging production problem you have had to deal with? 
Also, congrats on the new home, guys. Oh, oh, oh that's congrats. <laughs> oh, this oh, thank you. Thank they were you. talking to you for a minute. I was like, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Challenging. It's been, again, that's been a long time ago. I, I think I just kind of have to reiterate what I said earlier was just Jeff not Gunn. having a script. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, not having a script is a scary thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and, and the other part, of course, in the convention world, I mean, oh, your job is basically world. herding cats. That's. I have a lot of bad stories from that. <laughs> <laughs> I got this client. Hurting the cats. Hurting the cats. Yeah. That's a production um, conventions is a whole other stuff. Uh, but God love these guys. I were a video right now for uh, It's for been the only two weeks, but yeah. I'm not going to say anything right now. I've been working on it. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. How many yeah, um, actors... How many actors do you work with? A lot. Like this I have right now, pretty yeah. much 20, yeah, 25 cat. that I work <laughs> with full time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, hmm. He responds better to smoke signals than texts. I know that much. <laughs> it's it's really bad when Garrett Wong is ahead of him. <laughs> is he? Oh, oh, yeah, he's done. He's done. Uh, I've got everything I need from him. Nuts. Garrett doesn't do text much, does he? Oh, he not. doesn't even respond to emails. It's the worst. Is, the is Garrett going to watch this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's. You know what? Oh, I'm going to text him. <laughs> Whether or not he's he reads the text, all. he's heard it all. <laughs> You were, men- <laughs> you were mentioned. <laughs> uh, we love you, Garrett. I love Garrett, All right, too. so I was just kidding. We actually have one last fan question. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, Between at- Connor Trenier and Dominic Keating. <laughs> <laughs> at Damon for you via Twitter asks, if you could go back in time, would you do anything differently? Ha! <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, wow. <laughs> That's a loaded question. Uh, it is, and I want to hear the answer. Quite honestly, I, I probably wouldn't because, you know, I, like I said earlier, I have no regrets. And what's the point of having regrets? I made a decision 30 some odd years ago to walk in the doors of Gene Roddenberry's office and I never looked back. Mm. So probably not. Yeah. Yeah. Good answer. It's good to not have regrets. It is. What can we do about them? Exactly. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. Cry. Right. <laughs> Put the skeletons back. Yeah. Uh, well, we got those done. Yep. How about we go to some trivia? All right. Um, are you guys ready for some yes. Star Trek trivia? Yep. All right. Uh, today we're playing for Gregory McNeil. Uh, where you guys are playing yeah, for Greg- yeah. Gregory McNeil, Dominic. Connor. We're going to win you a new car. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I am playing for our brand new shiniest member, which right at this very moment is Michael Hawley. Michael I'm playing Hawley. for Michael Hawley. Good luck, Michael. Great. Okay. Uh, so the rules are simple. It's you three against producer okay. Mark. Um, it's multiple choice. And uh, question number one. Here we go. In the Voyager episode, The Shoot, what crew member is Ensign Harry Kim incarcerated with? A, Commander Chakotay. B, Lieutenant Tom Paris. C, Seska. Or D, Neelix. Shit. Did we get it? It's uh, Paris. Tom. Yeah. Tommy. Yeah. Nice. Ding, ding, ding. Tink. <laughs> How'd you know? I watched it. <laughs> <laughs> I watched it for the Garrets. <laughs> quite I don't sh- even remember that title now. God. <laughs> it's a quite a good episode, actually. The shoot. Yeah, yeah they're in they're in uh, detention, and it's it's at the bottom of a slide. Is it seventh season? In, uh, oh, they think they're on a season. planet, but it's oh. actually on a, a, space, on a space station, station wow. uh, incarceratory. Yeah, they try to break mm. out and yeah. they can't because wow. they're on a space station. I don't remember. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Question number two. What alien race that lives in fluidic space does the Voyager encounter in the episode Scorpion Part 1 and 2? A, the Kazon. B, the Borg. C, the Vidians. Or D, species 8472. Oh, Shiza. Shut, 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 Ooh. shut. I get this right all the time, but I never know the answers. <laughs> You're good uh, with the buzzer. You're the buzzer man. It's either, it's either, it's either. I think it's A or D, but... I think it's D. It's D. I think it's D. Okay, let's go. Come on, you avoid your girl. Let's go with the D. Ding, ding, ding. Yes! Yes! Oh! yes! <laughs> <laughs> Loving it! Like I said, some people get very into this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, question number three. Who defended Kirk at his court martial in the original series episode Court Martial? A. Sam Cogley. B. Mr. Spock. 
C, Captain Pike, or D, Dr. McCoy? Woo. You are good at that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we think it's the doctor. We think it's well, it has, it has to be Spock, Spock or the doctor because the other the two doc, don't exist. I'd say, wouldn't you say? I think I'd go with the doc. Would you? Um, Mark, what would you go with? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go with your gut. What do you think? Well, one of those. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> I just got a funny. F- I haven't seen it. I let's go with the doctor. Damn! Uh, mark, 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 mark. It's Spock, Spock, Spock. Well, I'm sorry. I guess before I get all excited, what were the two other ones? The not Spock, not McCoy. It's Pike. <laughs> well, it wasn't no. Pike. We it know was that. Sam hey, Cogley. Sam, Sam Cogley. Yeah. Who the fuck, is Sam? Cogley? My answer is Sam Cogley. Who's yeah. Sam Cogley? <laughs> he was the. Public defender in that region of space or something. Oh, sure. Oh, my God. <laughs> he had advertisements on TV during yeah, the day. Yeah, yeah. Are you being court-martialed? That's right. <laughs> Call me now. We will fight for you. <laughs> will you rear-ended black shovel pod? Cinco, 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 siete, nuevo, dos. <laughs> so I'm on a park bench. Uh, park uh, bench. Okay, question number four. In the movie Insurrection, how long had it been since the Baku left their homeworld? A, 126 years. B, six months. C, 309 years. Or D, 1,000 years. Oh, I agree. I have the insurrection. I wasn't idea. listening. It's, <laughs> it, it doesn't matter. Even if I had been. Can you actually know. know this? I know this one. Do you? Can you read it again? I'm good. Sure. Um, question number four. In the movie Insurrection, how long had it been s- since the Baku left their home world? Oh, the Baku. You even know who they are? No, I no. do. So, no, <laughs> how, how long? Oh, Baku. How long? <laughs> <laughs> well, this guy, I mean, well, well, hang on. How it's oh, not six months. Answers. It's okay. not, it's, is it? Let's hear well, the right. answers Let's again. Hear, here we go. I want to go with. 126 years, B, six months, C, 309 years, or D, a thousand years. C or D? 126? Why? I mean, why, I mean... It's a crapshoot. It's thousand? not B. It's, a crap it's, shoot. it's not six months, I don't it's think. It's not six months. No. Uh, no? You think it's a thousand years? I th- yeah. I'm probably. Let's go with a thousand years. Oh, shit. Oh. He thought it was a thousand. I thought it was a thousand. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> so it's not a thousand. It's not a thousand. So what are they again? <laughs> six months, 309 or 106. 126. 126. 126. So is it oh, whatever? Oh, shit. I'm going to go with 126 then. 309. Yep. 309. <laughs> Damn. Okay. What do you know? All right. Right. It's I would still 2-1, is that correct? Yeah. I'm literally yeah. standing beside my own trousers. <laughs> <laughs> in the question number five, in the Deep Space Nine episode, Defiant, what type of new Starfleet ordinance was first seen being used by the Defiant? Ooh, mark, 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 mark. A, quantum torpedoes. B, a grappling arm. C, metaphas- C metaphasic torpedoes. Or D, subspace weapon. It's the grappling. I'm pretty Peter. sure it's the grappling. Oh, mark, mark, no! mark, 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 mark. Uh, the uh, torpedoes, the quantum torpedoes. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's a tie. Oh. Dos, dos. Do we have a tiebreaker? That's too old. <laughs> we don't. Sorry. No. No, everybody oh. gets cars. Everyone gets cars today. You get a car. Oh, and you get a car. <laughs> you get a car. Uh, and if you get in an accident. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations, Michael Hawley, and congratulations, Gregory McNeil. Yes, well done, Greg. Well, that's the first tie we've had ever, I think. Yeah. I think so. This might be the first time we didn't have a tiebreaker already. <laughs> it must be our new space. Um, yeah. I'd like to thank the Random Redshirt Podcast for putting these questions together. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Random. Thank you, you guys. And, uh, beautiful eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's time for Stuck on a Deserted Island with Connor Trenier. What the hell is that? Uh, you shall find out. I'm scared. Um, looks like Christmas. All right. So it is um, Stuck on a Deserted Island, comma, with Connor Trenier. Mm-hmm. I'm no, he's not there. This. I'm not there. Not I'm nearby. There. We're all nearby. Uh, and uh, you're there for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. And you are given four choices. Your author, you get their complete works. Your musician, composer, you get their complete works. Your dessert, like if you pick pie, you get all the pie. Uh, and your cuisine. Cuisine. 
Like if you want Italian, obviously you get all the Italian. Uh, and then you get given to you the complete works of Shakespeare and the uh, religious text of your choice. Those are already there on your bedside table. Like at the Motel 6. Oh, you get a bedside table? <laughs> yeah. Well, no, you don't. I mean, you get a rock. It's on a rock. <laughs> it's on a rock. <laughs> and then you get a bonus item. Um, for instance, <laughs> the bonus item has taken on a life of its own. Uh, my favorite one was Jimmy Darren decided he wanted a, a Ferrari. On <laughs> his deserted island. Yeah, he said he would make a road. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. But, you know, you could have a, a, a machete, which is always my suggestion. Um, <laughs> or what something did I choose? that you Do I need all of those things at the beginning? The well, you're going to want them. You're there the for author, the everything? You're there for your whole life. Oh you're by yourself. So, well, this is, you know, this is the game, Donnie. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, uh, so let's go with uh, your cuisine. Let's start there. That'd be Mexican. Ah, yes. Nice. Uh, your musician. Band. Composer. composer. Forever and ever. Forever and ever. I guess I'd go with the Beatles then. No. Mm -hmm. ah, I'll go to your own. You can come to mine. Okay. So far, we're doing great. Your author. That's a tough one. Uh, can we come back to that one? Sure. Okay. Um, and then we are at dessert. Cream brulee. Oh, wow. So we could say custard. <laughs> <laughs> sure. You, custard. You can have all the, all the. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then your. But I like I'm the surprised you didn't say French onion soup, actually. <laughs> now that I think about it. That's sort of all I've ever known Lolita Reese to dinner. <laughs> it's, it's the French onion soup I and the creme love brulee. That. Yeah. <laughs> with a, uh, and then your with bonus a stiff item. My bonus item. Boy, that is tough. I guess you know maybe a bottle of Smirnoff. Oh, you can get, well, you can you can get all, all Smirnoff. You have that that'll just that'll be, be on tap. Oh, yeah. that's on tap. It's like yeah. those old bank things where like like at home. Yeah, the pneumatic tube. <laughs> yeah. You know, I I think I'd probably like a pontoon boat, so I could cruise around the island. <laughs> <laughs> she can't escape on a pontoon boat. Yeah, that I shit can't. Would sink. Can't go very far. Just to okay. tool around. Well, that's okay because we have a wall. Yeah. Okay. Around. <laughs> a moat. It's like a moat. Yeah. 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 Well, the yeah. world. It's very yeah. cute. It's, it's like, like it's, it's like, like Disneyland. It's actually like the Truman <laughs> okay. Show. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> You'll run into the wall. Knock, knock. <laughs> All right. Now we have to get to your author. Boy, that's a tough one. And you say Shakespeare's already taken, huh? Shakespeare's well, you already, you that. already get it. We give you. Yeah, that. I, yeah, I know. Because yeah, yeah. so many people chose it all the time. Right Counted. now, I'm kind of into the Jack Connolly series of stuff, so I, I just have to say. Is there a say, lot of it? Yeah. Right. Yeah, a lot of it. That's uh, Those are cop books. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Jack Connolly. She likes Jack the procedural. Con yeah. Okay. <laughs> I do. Um, I do. Um, what is the comfort of that? Do you know anything? What is, what you know, I grew up with my dad who loved detective magazines. Remember right. in the old days, right. in the oh, yeah, 60s? Right. And, you know, we watched the original FBI and all right. those streets of San Francisco and all that stuff. So I just, it's in my blood, I guess. I thought you were going to say murder is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that too. Um, <laughs> all right. That's a pretty good island. I think so. <laughs> yeah. That's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad I think at all. So I like the pontoon boat. It has to happen though. Yeah, because yeah. you can't run away on a pontoon. And boat. you also might find the odd floating bottle of Smirnoff. Well, there you go. <laughs> I'd be happy with a message in it. That's yeah, exactly. yeah. The message in the bottle. <laughs> You're stuck. <laughs> send me some creme brulee. Yeah, yes. Exactly. <laughs> I'll send you some ice cream. Uh, well, Lolita, it was a thrill to have you on here. Yes, thank yeah. you guys thank so you much. Down. So much fun. I'm yeah, finally for... glad we got to do this. Yeah, thank you for being so much. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you so much. Yeah, love. thank you guys. I can't and, wait uh, to see the, the the work on Voyager and and the Westmore documentary. Yes. And one more time, how can you find the DS9 documentary? We're gonna have to get well, back to you. I did, it oh, is did on Amazon research? Prime. If there you have you Amazon Prime, See? I just found it. Yeah, no, there, there you, go. you go. On Amazon Prime. On Amazon Prime. Thank you, Mark. Um, and then uh, normally we give a gift. Uh, Alameda's uh, Vineyard uh, has given us a bunch of wine to give as gifts to our guests. Uh, but you are on your way from here directly to the airport. I am, and I only took a little carry-on, yeah. so I can't take the wine. But thank so we're going to put it in the yeah. water, we'll, and you, <laughs> you'll find it eventually. <laughs> It'll we'll be floating it. with we'll the smirnoff. Yeah. 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 Well, we'll get, we'll get it, it to you next time you're down. Yeah, here. thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, sweetie. Great, great. Thank Yay. you. Yay, thank you. Number one guest in our new home. Yay, Yay. that's right. Yeah, really. Set the bar high. This is great space, you guys. Thank, thank you, Dale. Yeah, thank yeah. you. It's all right, isn't it? I think it's We're going to shoot porn. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs>
Like, subscribe, and join us on Patreon.